This is a film of electrical experiments and reasoning to link together large-scale experiments with big electric charges and their forces and the very small Millikan's experiment that showed us that there are elementary electric charges, atoms of electricity. Here is our program. In the Millikan experiment, we had two plates very close together with a tiny charged particle between them. A battery connected to the plates, put charges on the plates, which could make the particle just hang there in the air. I hope you saw another film of this Millikan experiment. If you did, you saw that the particle started with two elementary electric charges and Three small batteries drove just sufficient charges onto the plates to make the particle hover there. So we know that two elementary electric charges can just be pulled up by these charged plates with a force that balances the weight of that particle. Suppose I wanted to know the charge on other things, such as, say, a big charged balloon. If I could shove the balloon in between these plates and measure the force on it, I could easily calculate the charge. I can't shove a balloon between these plates. I need big plates, far apart like that, with plenty of room. Suppose we could somehow move from that experiment to this, then we could measure the force on a charged ball or balloon or something and know what its charge was then we could take two such charged objects, put them a measured distance apart, measure the force with a spring balance or something, and then we could substitute that in our expression for Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law says force is proportional to number of elementary charges in excess of neutrality times number of elementary charges over distance squared. We can put it in this form, force equals constant K, number of elementary charges, number of elementary charges, distance squared. If we measure the force, we can calculate K, and then we can find out the force between any number of charges, even between one electron here and one electron here a meter apart. We could calculate the force between them and compare that with the miserably gravitational attraction between them. But we can't do any of that, unless we have some way of linking this experiment to that one. What we need is some link which enables us to find out, in this experiment, what the force would be there. I want to know what happens when I move the plates farther apart, what happens when I make them wider like that, and other things like that. So I'm going to set up a large experiment and use it first for a research job to find out what happens when we make changes. Here is my large apparatus, a big metal plate with another big metal plate which we can place above and put charges on them. A metal ball on the end of a spring balance with spring here to measure any force on the ball and a pointer to show the force. I'd like you to see how sensitive this is, so I shall ask my assistant to put a small load on the ball. One gram's too much, a tenth of a gram. First of all, let's have a look at the zero. It's still swinging, but it's swinging around zero. Load up the ball, please. A tenth of a gram is pulled by gravity with a thousandth of a newton. And as you see, it's going to settle down not far from 10 divisions on the scale. And so this is arranged to read one ten thousandth of a newton for each scale division. Take the load off. We shall do that more carefully later. At the moment, that just shows you how it works. Now I would like to put the other plate there. These are insulating towers.
we lift the plate with insulating handles. Now we'll charge up the ball and put it between the plates. I have an ancient charging device which gets charges by induction. Move the ball over nearer to me, please. Now put the ball between the plates and see what happens. We have to be rather careful because the ball induces charges on the nearest plate to it and is then attracted by them. Down a little, lower the whole apparatus a little and we shall see what happens. Not much force there now because the plates are not charged. Now I'm going to connect these two plates to my huge battery. It's a big dangerous one too. I've already connected the lower plate to the negative and the upper plate will connect to the positive of the battery. There now. Now you'll have to adjust the height of the balance so the ball is in the middle and then we can see the force. Oh, I think the force is bigger than that. Up, 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 up. That's better. Still higher, still higher. There. Somewhere about 20 on our scale. Now watch what happens when I disconnect the battery and connect the two plates together. Ready? Go. Force disappears and the ball actually loses its charge. I'm going to use this apparatus for a program of research to find out what does happen if we make the plates wider by extending them like that or move them to bigger separation or change the battery. We need that for our measurements. But you might find such a series of investigations rather boring. So I'm going to make a scientific problem of this. I want you to see if you can guess what's going to happen each time I make a change. Then we'll make the change and you can see whether your guess is true. Here is the outline of my complete research program. We shall have two large charged plates with a small charged ball between them and measure the force on the ball. First with one battery connected to the plates, then we'll change to two batteries in series and see what that does to the force on the ball. Next investigation, we'll change from two big plates to two bigger plates, extending the area. We shan't change every, anything else that time. A good scientist doesn't change all the other things all over again when he makes an investigation. Then we shall change to two plates and move them further apart to a bigger separation, keeping everything else the same, and again see what that does to the force on the charged ball. Our first investigation will be with two plates, first with one battery, then with two batteries. What do you guess that change will do to the force? Come and see it tried. Here are the batteries, one and the other. Let's see if the zero of the scale is right. Yes, that reads pretty close to zero. When we put charges on these big plates, we shall have to be careful to raise or lower the whole spring balance so that the ball is midway between the plates. I know the force, the electric force, ought to be the same all the way up between one plate and another, but the ball carries a small charge and that induces a charge on each plate. And if it's nearer to one plate, the induced charge pulls it more. So you'll see my assistant very carefully adjust the ball each time before we make a measurement to be midway between the plates. Now let's charge up the ball. Move the ball up, please. Move it in. Let's connect the battery, the lower plate to the negative, the upper plate to the positive. I'm so glad we have a safety resistor. There. Now move the ball to the center. Up a bit. Up. Up a bit more. Now let's see what the balance reads. 
Yes, the ball's in the middle. The balance reads 11, 12, 11.2. Well, it'll settle down round about 11.8. Now, please remember that. About 11. Point, no, I'd say 11.6 will be nearer. We'll say 11.6. Before we change to two batteries, look at these two which I have. The one we've used and the other one. It looks the same, but I'm going to show you it is the same. We'll connect the lower plate to the negative. The upper plate to the positive and see what the measurement says. Center. Now it's about 10.8, around about 11. Very close to 11. It's a little smaller, they're not quite equal. Now I'm going to try both batteries in series. We'll disconnect and Disconnect, and now we will connect the negative of this battery to the positive of that one, tail to head in series. And now lower plate to the negative, upper plate to positive. Now measure the force. It's much bigger. What did you guess? Now we had 11.6 and 11. And I seem to see very close to 23, a little under. Almost exactly double. When you double the battery, you double the force on the ball between the plates. Now, let's record that on our research program. With one battery, force, and with two batteries in series, twice the force. Our second investigation will change from plates to plates of twice the area. We'll add extra plates. What do you guess that change will do to the force? See it tried. Now the ball is already charged and the spring balance reads just about 22. Everything is connected. Add larger plates. Base plate. Pillar to support the extra plate. Now, let's see what the scale reads. Very little change. Increasing the area has no effect on the force on the charged ball between the plates. But something must happen. And something does happen. When we add more plate, the battery has to drive more charge onto it. We've arranged a little mill to show you the extra charge running onto the plates. First, disconnect the battery. Here's the mill. A ball, and another ball, with a small air gap between them. Then we will run from the battery to one ball, and then between the two, a little flag of metal leaf that can go flip-flap and carry a charge across from one ball to the other, like that. Now, we must take away our extra plate. Start, 
Charging. Ready. Go. You see, charge has run across onto this plate. Now it's running slower and slower. Ready to add the second plate. Ready. Go. There you've seen the extra charge running onto the other plate. Now let's put that on our research program's record. Force and same force. Doesn't make any difference. In our third investigation, we shall take the plates and move them to twice the separation. What do you guess that change will do to the force? See it try. Now, charge up the ball, please. Move the ball in. Now, we're going to start with the plates closer together. So, we'll lower the plates, please. Take away half the pillar. We'll start with the plates there, and then we can move them to twice the distance apart. Put the ball midway. Now read the force. It's 21, 20, 21, 21 and a half. It's around 21. Now remember that, 21. Now lift up the plates to twice the distance apart with the battery still connected. Up. <coughs> Level the balance up till the ball is midway and look at the force. And it is 10, 11, very close to half the 21 that it was before. With the battery attached at double the distance apart, the force is half. Now let's record that on our research program. Here we had force F at that separation and at double the separation we had half the force. We shall use those in our main experiment. In our main experiment, we want to change from the very small Millikan experiment, the two small plates a very small distance apart, to two large plates a long way apart. And we want to make sure that the force here on some small particle moved across to here will be the same here as there. The first change I have to make from here to here is to widen the plates out like that. Widen them out to much wider ones. I'm allowed to do that by the results of investigation two. That enables me to make that change. Then I'm going to move the plates farther apart. Look up here. Every time we move them twice as far apart with the battery connected, we halve the force. You might imagine going on halving and halving and halving I'm going to move the plates till they're a hundred times as far apart. Then I'm pretty sure from this that I shall get one one hundredth of the force. I'm going to pay for that, though, and get back to the same force by changing the battery. I'm going to remember that with two batteries, we get twice the force. So I'm going to have a hundred batteries instead of just one original battery. And if I have a hundred batteries, I shall multiply the force by a hundred for distance, by a hundred for batteries, and I shall be back to the same force there as I had here. So I shall use that and that and get to the same force on a small particle that's transferred from the Millikan experiment with its charge to the big plate region. Then I can weigh the force on any other charged object here and find how many elementary electric charges it has. We're ready for the main argument.
Here's my big battery. Compare it with the Millikan battery that we used, a trio here. Now I have one of that, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, five times five, twenty-five, another story, fifty, and another whole batch, a hundred. A hundred times the Millikan battery. Here is our link, then, between Millikan's experiment and the big experiment we're going to do. In Millikan's experiment, the distance between the plates was very small. 3.1 millimeters apart. And in our big experiment, we'll put them a hundred times as far apart. 31 centimeters. Just measure that. Here are the plates. And the distance from here to here is 10, 20, 30, 31 centimeters. We shall pay for that increase of distance by changing from one battery trio for Millikan to a hundred battery trios in this experiment. Then, in the Millikan experiment, we had a particle which had a known mass of 2.86 times 10 to the minus 15 of a kilogram which means that gravity pulled it 9.8 newtons per kilogram, 2.8 times 10 to the minus 14 of a newton. And we know that that particle had just two elementary electric charges on it when it was held suspended by the charge plates there in that region. Then in this case, we've arranged to have the same force on it. So with the same force and the same charge, we could say we have the same between these plates here. Now we're going to put here a metal ball with a charge on it and measure the force on that. Then we know what the force would be on two elementary electric charges here, so we know what the force, so we know from the force on a big ball here what the charge is on the ball in excess of neutrality. We shall want to measure this force in newtons on our spring balance. See the calibration. There. The pointer reads 9.8 when we have on the ball one-tenth of a gram. One-tenth of a gram is one-ten-thousandth of a kilogram. And it's pulled by gravity with a force of 9.8 ten thousandths of a newton. So we have here 9.8 ten thousandths of a newton reads 9.8 on the scale. And so each scale division here is worth one ten thousandth, ten to the minus four of a newton. I want you to remember that when we make use of the scale. Now we're going to take a ball with known charge by comparison with silicon, put it here near a twin brother with equal charge, we can make the charges equal by touching balls, measure the force when there are known distance apart, and then substitute in this Coulomb's law expression for F, number of elementary charges on one ball, same number on the other ball, and distance apart squared, and we can calculate K, Coulomb's law constant, of which we shall make good use. In our actual experiment, we'll make the Coulomb's force measurement first. Two equal balls, balance as usual. Charge them both. Then touch the balls together so that we share charges equally between the two by symmetry. Now we'll put them at a known distance apart, just down to this mark is, as you see, 0.15 of a meter, 15 centimeters center to center. Now arrange them at that distance, and we'll read the force. A little lower, a little higher. We have to read the end of the pointer for this. A little higher, please. That's it. 
Now, the end of the pointer seems to me to be reading just a mile. Six point. We'll wait while it settles down. About 6.7. Right? Put that ball in between the plates. Remember, we've got 100 batteries connected to the plates and 31 centimeters between them. Measure the force. Down a little. Down. That's in the center. Read the scale. The end of the pointer. 36. 35. 35.5. Make a note of that. 35.5 on the scale, and in our earlier experiment, 6.7 on the scale. We've arranged these two experiments to give the same force on the same charge. And I've transferred the Millikan data from that blackboard to here. For the ball, force is therefore 35.5 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. And the ball has on it N elementary electric charges. Find out how many, like this. N must be two elementary electric charges increased in the ratio of that to that. Two times 35.5 times 10 to the minus 4 over 2.8 times 10 to the minus 14. That's 71 over 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4 plus 14 plus 10. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. That goes about 10 times and it goes 0.4 or 100 over 4, or 25. And so this is 25 times 10 to the 10th elementary electric charges. 250 billion elementary electric charges on that ball. And that's not a very big charge either. Now we can calculate the Coulomb's law constant. We have from here that K is equal to F times d squared over n1, n2 is n, and n never is the same. And so, k is equal to force, 6.7 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons, d squared, 15 hundredths of a meter squared, times 15 hundredths, therefore, over n squared. N is 25 times 10 to the 10th elementary electric charges, so it's 25 times 25 times 10 to the 10th squared is 10 to the 20th. And that's equal to 6.7 multiplied by 15 multiplied by 15 over 25 times 25 times 10 to the minus 20, minus 22, minus 24, minus 28. 10 to the minus 28. We can take 5 times 5 out there and say 5 into 15 goes 3 times, 5 into 15 goes 3 times, and then we have 3 3s are 9 times 6.7 over 25. 9 times 6.7, 9 7 to 63, 9 6 to 54, 60 over 25. Multiply top and bottom by 4. 100 at the bottom. 240 at the top, 2.4. So I have 2.4 times 10 to the minus 28. And the unit, elementary electric charge squared. That's the Coulomb's law constant, and it tells us the force of repulsion between one electron and one electron placed one meter apart, that number of newtons. It looks very small but just compare it with their gravitational attraction. We have measured K, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 28. And I hope you'll work that out for yourself more carefully from the film notes. The official value is 2.3, but I don't want you to think our close agreement is anything more than good luck. 10% is a reasonable error in this rough measurement. Let's calculate 
the force between two electrons at a distance d apart. The electrical force is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the minus 28 times one elementary electric charge times one elementary electric charge over the distance squared. Compare that with their gravitational attraction. That will be given by the gravitation constant 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 11 times mass in kilograms 9 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms times the mass of the other electron in kilograms, so that's squared over d squared. Then the gravitational force is given by this. 6.6 .6 times 81 is about 500 times 10 to the minus 11 times 10 to the minus 62. 62, 73, and the 500 will bring it down to 71. And so it is 5 times 10 to the minus 71 over d squared. Now let's compare that with that. Electrical force over gravitational force. Notice that d squared cancels out. They're both of them inverse square law forces. Whatever their distance, the electrical force is bigger than the gravitational by this over this. 5 into 2.4 is equal to 0.5, roughly, 10 to the minus 28 over minus 71. 10 to the minus 71 is 71 minus 28, which is 10 to the 43, or 5 times 10 to the 42. The electrical force is enormously greater. When people say that the electron is very, very tiny, some of us like to say the electron is very, very big. Electrical forces hold matter together. Take one more example of an electron holding a proton in a simple hydrogen atom. Then in that case, everything is the same as regards the electrical force, but in the gravitational attraction, except it's an attraction electrically, in the gravitational attraction, we have a proton mass and an electron mass. The proton is 1,800 times bigger than the electron mass. So we must add a factor of 1,800, which will reduce this enormous factor from 5 to something like 2 times, three down there, 10 to the 39. The electrical attraction between proton and electron is 2,000 billion, 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 billion times as big as the gravitational attraction.